Hi folks, I'm Nathan with Two Guys in a Ride, and welcome to our CarTech how-to video on the 2021 Mercedes-Benz S500. Today I'll be covering the driver's information and the infotainment screens. I'll do a general overview, show you how to access information, and do a deep dive. Let's get started. Today we're working with our friends at Sears Imported Autos selling beautiful Mercedes-Benz in Minnetonka, Minnesota. Okay, so this is the, the the new MBUX system here, and in the the driver's information screen here is a 12.3 inch screen, and just like the the, the previous systems, it's fully customizable. It hasn't lost a, a, a bit of what it had, um, and there are some new features. So to control that. Uh, we're over here on the left side of the steering wheel, and you have got your uh, track button here now, and your home button, and a back button. And those are the three items you use to control all the digital information in your screen. So the way it works here, if I put my thumb on, on the OK, you see the four arrows. If I swipe, uh, let's see, if I swipe up, okay, it's going to show me media. So you see all those little red dots on the screen? There we go, Eco Display. And this was from the last reset. So, yeah, Eco Information. That's for Eco Information from start. Okay, this is the odometer. And then we're back to navigation there. On the top of the screen, you've got your traffic, your speed limit sign. You've got your adaptive your cruise on or off there. You've got your digital miles per hour. You've got, of course, uh, uh, the, the lane centering on right there. And then you have got your uh, gap setting and you've got right there at the bottom. And then at the top, you've got your lane centering. Um, we'll go through these, kind of show you how to reset them if you want to. So for instance, on this screen here, if I just press OK, I get a chance to reset the odometer or set the current screen as favorite. Now, I don't want to do any of those, so I'm going to hit the back button here. I'm going to go down one. Okay, this is going to be the same thing. I'm going to press OK, reset from start, say, and that or save uh, current screen as favorite. And these will all do kind of that same thing here. So if I go down here, we'll pick one more. We'll go to, say, uh, navigation. That will have a little different. I press OK. You get destinations. You get zoom, map settings, and set current screen as favorites. All right. So I'm, I'm going to get out of there. But you can do all those uh, just by clicking on the OK button when you're in these particular screens. Now, the 3D graphics on this are really amazing. They're, they're, they're very good. So if you, if you use the trackpad, you can zoom in. And you can zoom out on that map, which is just phenomenal. Now, of course, on the bottom, you know, you've got your miles still empty, your headlight indicator on the far right, that you're in, your gear selector so that you're in park right now. Um, you've got, uh, let's see, 83, to, you got outside temperature, and then power and charge indicator. And then, of course, the C stands for comfort mode. And then your gear selector is over on the far, far, far right. All right, so if I go here to home, I can actually select several different um, themes. So if I click on OK, there here is understated. And you can tell that, you know, like the speedometer only shows up to 20 because you don't need more than that. You're not at zero. Uh, so it just really simplifies things. That was understated. Here's sport. Sport is awesome. Looks great. Okay, right. press home again. We're gonna go from sport to exclusive, and I'm just swiping to the right there, pressing okay. Here's exclusive. And if I press home and I go over here, I got the classic display, which I had up before. I'll press home, go back. Here's full screen navigation. Look at that, 12.3 inches of screen for your navigation. And you saw it, we had it smaller before in between the gauges if you didn't want that big picture. Uh, assistance. So right here, you, you this is your assist, like your lane keeping assist, adaptive cruise control, that kind of stuff. You can have that full screen. Uh, that, that's just a neat picture there. All right, I'm going to go back to home. And then you can, of course, click on service. And here you can see like your uh, uh, how much, your tire pressure and the tire temperature, which I think is just fantastic. All right, 
So uh, this does have, of course, fully adaptive cruise control. Um, down here, where you got gap setting, you got your on-off button here. You got um, set plus, set minus. Okay, we got your resume, and then you've got your cancel right there. All right, so if I go over here to understated and I click on it, and I go ahead and I click uh, the OK button, I get some different colors. Now, if I as I go through them, you can see they change not only the driver's information screen, but they also change uh, to some extent over on the infotainment screen. So I can pick some different colors, which is really which is really nice, and then just click on it and that's that's the color it stays so it's kind of the kind of the background screen of the infotainment center and then the background screen of this i do love if you notice behind the gauges the the little mountains continue uh i just i ask you that's this looks really cool looks like you're looking through a looking glass or something and if i go uh, back to home and we'll go to sport here okay we'll just look at Take a look at it. You've got a G-force meter here. You've got pound foot of torque. All right, you got RPM in the middle here. And as you accelerate, you can see it gets the circle gets larger. That's really cool. And then I believe that you have um, over on the far right, you've got horsepower. And then on the course, the far uh, the far right, you've got your oil temp and, and pressure. So I mean, it's just a beautiful dash in person. It really, really is nice. All right, next, we're gonna move over to the infotainment screen. Okay, so the infotainment screen itself is a 12.8 inch OLED screen. And, you know, the, the, as a result, the colors are fantastic. The graphics are fantastic. They look great. There's a lot of 3D uh, uh, element to, to all of it, and it looks really good. It does have Apple CarPlay, wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, Bluetooth AM and FM radio, HG radio, Sirius XM, and of course, a um, Herms uh, uh, LTE Wi-Fi hotspot. Now, uh, this this is the updated MBUX system. It is uh, supposed to be 50% faster than the previous MBUX, which would be pretty amazing because that was pretty fast. Um, and then, of course, the MBUX part that you're all used to, if you if, if you drive a, a modern Mercedes, it's all here. It, it's just rearranged differently and you have a few other options. So to start with, basically the screen is you got this portion here and then you've got your climate control. You'll notice that, um, you, I'll overlay a, a, maybe a still picture here, but there's no center controller in the center armrest area anymore. There's no trackpad, there's no rotary dial. That's all been done away with and you are just left with touchscreen and the steering wheel. That being said, the, the steering wheel controls in, in Mercedes-Benz have always been phenomenal. And these, uh, the, the buttons are new. Uh, they're a little different. They're, they're the touch buttons, not actually like a, like a real physical click, but they are just as good as what was in here uh, before. It's amazing. It worked really great on the driver's information screen, and I am sure it will look great or work great on the infotainment screen. Now, this particular sound system is a 3D uh, Burmester sound system. It has 16 speakers and 760 watts of power. Down below, everything's touch. So you can raise and lower your temperature right here. You can increase your fan speed. Of course, if you set it to auto, then everything there will, um, you know, you have auto for right passenger, auto for driver, and then it will uh, adjust the fan speed for you as you adjust the climate. Now, if you want to see the climate menu, you go into here and then here's the sync button so i wish that they'd put a sync button right on the first screen so you didn't have to go to a second screen to get that but it is right there uh, uh, just below that you do have some i call them soft touch buttons they're not actually buttons but they do have haptic feedback so when you press them you feel a little uh, uh like a click in your finger so dynamic refers to your drive modes so if i click on that i've got sport i've got sport plus individual where I can adjust several uh, areas uh, and then if I go backwards comfort 
and eco and these are the ones that showed up on our driver's uh, information screen as well the letters do just to the right of that you've got a phenomenal camera system so if I just press that you're gonna see now I've got we've got some things hanging over the side to help prevent the um, sunlight from getting in but this is I can go right in I can zoom out I can say um, I want just a front like this I still get the 3d view I can look at the back and still get the, the, the uh, bird's eye view I can say I want to look from the left, the right, auto, okay, and then I can take the, my parking sensors uh, off, you know, the parking sensors in the front and rear, I can take them on or off. Okay, so absolutely phenomenal uh, camera. I'll put it in reverse just for a second so you can see what that looks like. Then you get the dynamic swivel guidelines. I love this um, the, the sensor, the perimeter sensor right here around the car, it's showing you what you're close to and how close you are to it and how much of a danger it considers it. So uh, it's picking up some, some uh, grass in front of us, some taller grass, uh, but then you got that swivel guidelines. Now, if I pop it into drive, okay, it's not so giving me a warning, but you notice it switched the camera? So now I've got my front camera. So you can use this for front parking as well. So, man, it's just a phenomenal uh, 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 camera system. And on that large screen, it's beautiful. All right over here, you've got some safety systems. It just pulls up here. So you've got, so these are all the basics. If you want to see all of them, you just slide over here, click on all settings. And then you have to look under assistance, vehicle, light, system, and info and then down here. So under assistance, under driving, I have active distance assist distronic here. So I can, um, I can set this to brake and accelerate according to the drive program to be uh, comfortable or to be dynamic. I can adjust speed for curves or speed limits and I can just simply uncheck and those will go on or off. Okay. If I go down to collision avoidance, here I got ESP, okay, and, and then I can have that on or off. I can uh, turn on or off uh, brake, active brake assist, active lane keeping assist, active blind spot assist. And you may be wondering, well, these two have a pencil and these, this one has an eye. So what's the difference? Well, if it's got a pencil, you can set something. Like here, brake assist. You want it early, medium, or late. You can just click to select it. The eye just gives you information. There are no changes you can make. I can now go over to vehicle, and I can go up, and I can start with vehicle protection. So I can turn the interior motion sensor and the tow away protection on or off just by clicking. And any button you see like that, it's just a click. I can do collision notification. Now this is really cool. Uh, it uses the front camera, actually it uses all the cameras on the vehicle um, to take pictures. So if you have that turned on, which it is, and you go in here, you can turn on collision photos. And if you get hit, every camera on the car is gonna start taking pictures. So you're gonna have some documentation when you get back to your car of what happened. Now it does store on a USB and the best that I could tell is that that USB is the one inside the center armrest storage area and it should be uh, the one on the far right. Okay, dynamic, uh, dynamic select. So if you want to program your vehicle for an individual drive mode, that's where you do it. You go to dynamic select, you go to individual, and now you say, what do I want my drive to be? Do I want it to be eco, comfort, sport, or manual? And you just click. Okay, now what do, what do I want my suspension to be? Well, I want that to be sport plus. What do I want my steering to be? Set that to sport. ESP, I'm gonna set that to comfort. All right, now when I go to my drive modes, okay, which were down here, now you can see that's sport, that's sport plus, that's sport, and that's comfort. So, I, I, I mean, that's just, that's just cool. All right, that's where you set that. Now, uh, we were over here on, of course, vehicle. You can do your, set up your easy entry and exit feature right here. So you can set that to steering wheel and seat, or steering wheel only, or off completely. 
Locking functions you can look at here. You can have an acoustic lock, automatic door lock, automatic mirror folding, block, uh, block trunk access so you, no one can get in it. Those are all just click on or off. You can set up for a toll system. So let's go to lights, ambient lighting. You can manage the settings right here and it's just, uh, I can take here and I can just slide. And I think you're probably picking up, this car has phenomenal ambient lighting. It's, it's, it's in the doors, like, like just to the side of the, um, the window switches, right? And then it's up in and around all your seat controls, your memory seat controls. And then it goes across the dashboard, uh, you know, over, uh, underneath or behind the stereo system and back. It's just awesome. And then if you don't like a monochrome light, you can always go to uh, like an effect. So I'm gonna go like a multicolor. So if I go to with the green here, I get jungle green or chrome shine or Malibu Sunset. They're all in there. I can change the brightness. Okay, simple slide up and down. And this, by the way, links all three zones. And if I want to do it eventually, I turn that off. Then I can lower just one. And you can see what it is. You can see which zone it is. And here. Okay, and then you can go to effects. Uh, warning when exiting. Uh, climate, greeting, and multicolor an animation. Now this has to do, believe it or not, with your ambient lighting, it's things that the ambient lights do, just to help warn you. So for instance, under uh, um, climate, if I change the temperature, the ambient light does. Actually, I'm gonna go back, just to make it a little easier to see, I'm gonna set it just to one color. I'm just gonna set it to green. Now, if I go up, Every time I press it, that ambient light turns red. But if I turn it down, it turns a blue. So that's just way cool. I, I absolutely love that. That's, that's what I mean by the effects. One, the other thing that the ambient light does is if, if, if for instance, if you're in a, a situation where the automatic braking uh, front, you know, uh, collision assist comes on and it warns you, you know, usually there's a red light somewhere in your windshield that flashes red to warn you need to brake. The ambient lighting here flashes red all the way across. Your blind spot warning. Yep, you got that in the mirror. However, your ambient lighting, if it's a blind spot on the left, that lights up on the left side. If it's on the right, it lights up on the right side. So just some really neat things that the ambient lighting uh, helps with visually. Last thing there is if you open the door and, and the uh, system senses of like a bicyclist coming by, it'll flash red at you. It just makes it more easy to see something. You know, that color is so just a little uh, triangle in the mirror. All right. So let's go back here. Um, seats. Now, you do have seat kinetics. So I can, if I start this, that starts the program for the driver. This one starts it for the passenger. And if I go into the gear to rest, I can say, okay, um, I want it backrest, I want it backrest and seat surface, or just seat surface, and I can say including lumbar. All right, now, um, seat kinetics, is that like a massaging seat? Not really. What it's meant to do is keep you help keep you alert on longer drives, or anytime you're feeling sleepy. Uh, that's really what their purpose is. Um, so you're not going to get in and feel all this nice deep massaging. You can get those seats in here, but Seat Kinetics is designed to help keep you alert. All right, individually here, this, I love this. So you see where the lumbar is? Now you just have a dot where you can pinpoint where you want it to be. You gotta hold it there for a second. But man, it's just minute adjustments. I can feel it going down the right side of my back. Well, I kind of, I kind of, I'm, I'm going to leave it right there. I, I kind of like it there, but the, but the passenger can do the same thing. Okay, so I, I, I love that. I mean, it really, it really gives you f a finite adjustment uh, on, on, on that. All right, heating settings. Um, Additional seat uh, heating. So here you can say, I want, uh, on the driver's side, I want the armrest 
and the center console and the passenger armrest to be heated as well as in the back at this whoops you can have the armrests in the rear heated as well wow and then you can uncheck any one of those that you don't want now we're going to go back here I'm going to press the home button on the steering wheel. Uh, back under the car button here, we're still, we're, we did assistance, we did vehicle, we did light. We're going to take a look at system, but here you can look at audio. And you can have uh, green tone on or off. You can have voice ampli amplification on. You can uh, look at Parktronic stuff. You can raise or lower the volumes for the warnings and the tone and pitch. You can do the same thing for nav and announcements for traffic. So this is basically where you adjust all the little volume things that the car uh, kicks out at you. So that's under, again, the car icon, and then you go to a system, and then audio. You can, of course, look at internet and Bluetooth if you want. You can look at the time and the date and set that. You can do a software update, uh, and you have turn on your online updates, and then you can hit reset. Now, continuing along here after the car, you do have your hazard button, which is just a push button there. You do have your thumbprint or th fingerprint scanner button for your profiles. You got a power uh, on and off for the screen. Okay, if I go system off or display off, well, if you turn system off, it's actually going to turn the system off. Okay, I, would just, I just want the display off so it's kind of dark. I can see my, you notice how it leads this climate control uh, feature up. And then anytime I want it back, I just hit the home button and it pops back. Let's talk about the different apps that are in here. First of all, you're going to notice that there's a large icon with wording, which is nice. I've been able to make the, some of the fonts bigger because of the screen size. Navigation. I'm just going to click on it to get started. You can, of course, pinch to zoom. You can rotate it, very responsive. Okay. You want to program something, you can go ahead and you can click on where to. I, I don't think I would ever type anything in. So here we go. I'm going to go back to home and I'm just going to go. It doesn't even matter if you're in navigation. So let, let's plot her out with our voice command. Hey, Mercedes. How can I help? Navigate to McDonald's. Here is what I found. Where do you want to go? Two. I am calculating the route. All right, now the question is, how do you cancel a route? Uh, well, the easiest way is just to say, hey, Mercedes. How can I help? Cancel navigation. Canceling route guidance. Okay, there you go. That is just flat out the simplest way to do it. If you want to physically touch the screen to cancel a route, they make it so easy. So I'm going to get rid of this just by tapping. And it brings up this. So I guess I didn't get rid of that, but I got here. Just click on the checkered flag with the, um, the X. Cancels your route for you. Pretty awesome. All right, let's move on. Let's go back to home. Now, there's no phone connected currently, so we're going to connect one. On all new vehicles, when you have wireless Apple CarPlay and Bluetooth, which um, you know pretty much a lot of modern cars do, it's going to ask you to make a choice. Do you want to use Apple CarPlay with your phone, or do you want to use Bluetooth? All right, I'm going to recommend you spend the time getting used to doing Apple CarPlay and not Bluetooth. But you can't do them simultaneously, so it's one or the other. So I'm going to say accept and start Apple CarPlay. All right, so here we are, and we're, I'm on my Apple CarPlay, and I'm on Google Maps. So I can I can do run Google Maps just like I do on my phone. All right, I also have my music right there. I've got text messages down here with media. I got some nice big play buttons. I got a timeline. I can shuffle depending on, on what source I'm on. But uh, if I go back here, you can see the apps. They just display right on your screen. So if I go to say Amazon Music, it's just like clicking on Amazon Music on your phone. It'll look slightly different, but you have all the same features. Let's go back to home for a minute. So media. 
Well, it says no device connected, but remember, my phone is connected through Apple CarPlay, so it is. It's just saying that there's no device connected because I'm not connected via Bluetooth. If I was connected via Bluetooth, that would be there. So if I click on my phone, it's gonna go to my phone. If I click on USB, it's gonna tell me there's no device connected, but I could plug it into USB and then that would show up there. So let's go to home. And remember, we were on media. Let's go to radio. Now you've got favorites, Sirius XM, FM, and AM. We'll go back to Sirius XM here. What I like about this is you spin it. I, I love the look, like it's like it's a wall going around you. Just love that. Okay, so now let's say I want to search for a station. Well. You can simply go in here and you can look at a channel list. Okay. You can do categories, featured favorites, tune mix. Okay. And then you can say, I want all sources, just favorites. Okay. Uh, Sirius XM, FM, and AM. So you can search that way too. So I'm going to go back to backwards here. That's one way. If I click on here, that's another way, right? There's a lot of the same things, but it's just another way. Okay, if I go to the timer here, I can look at the timeline, especially if something's live. And if I go here, I can get to sound. All right, you can look at your equalizer and you can, of course, just make changes, tap the numbers in and you can do the bass, mid and treble. You balance some faders right here. It's just a click and drag. And then sound focus. Do you want it in the front? Do you want it here? And let's go back to home for a minute. So I showed you how to, in radio, to scroll through different favorites to find them. The question is now, how do you program a favorite? So let's say I click on this one. Okay, now in this screen, I can't do much, but if I go back and I go here, I can check mark that and I can make it a favorite. I can also uncheck it. And, it, and it's not then. Okay, so that's how you set a favorite there. If you want to go to FM, it's the same deal. So I, I just select that. I can kind of double tap that or tap, there you go. Now I got the star. If I click it again, it's not starred anymore. It's not a favorite. And remember your favorites will be your AM, your FM, and your SXM stations all together. So when you look under favorites, you'll see all of them from all three categories. We've looked at media already, so we're going to go over here to apps. Now under apps, you have the dash cam. This is where you can start do the recordings, right? And you can say loop recording so that let's say um, I am a bit surprised it's a USB instead of an SD card, but you can buy a USB with, you know, terabytes worth of storage for fairly cheap. Plug it in. Again, I think it's the one under the center uh, armrest console storage area. And then you plug it in and then you can do loop recording. Now loop recording, what it does is when the USB fills up, it erases the oldest content and replaces it with the newest and just keeps recording so you don't have to pull out that thing until there's an accident. Okay. Um, down here, you can make an individual recording if you want to do a one-time thing. Okay, and then of course that doesn't, is that part's not going to light up until I have a USB in there. All right, that is way cool. All right, now under info, this is the last one here, under info, um, I've got three categories. I've got vehicle, so you can see the accelerator changing. You can see the brake, okay? And then, of course, you've got, I'm assuming that's like a G-Force uh, bullseye on top of the car. You've got the shocks, okay? So the suspension there, that's really cool. Um, I don't, I can't remember what the, I don't remember what the plus one or minus one zero is. If you know that, you can let us know. Uh, that's in individual mode. Okay. Now, if I go to engine, I'm going to get a pound foot of torque. I'm going to get a horsepower and I'm going to get PSI. I'm going to get engine temperature and oil temperature all on one screen. And then if I go to consumption, I can look at the last seven and a half minutes, 30 minutes, 90 or three hours. All right. I hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching.